Right. Good morning, Miss Ann. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. Uh, I'm glad to hear that you're looking pretty today. And I know the ladies are excited to hear a, a message from the Word of God. Please go ahead and share with us. Thank you, Pastor. Before the year 2020 had ended, there was two uh, areas of, in, of my life that God, um, I felt He was dealing with me that I should be more alert and more serious in these two areas of my life. We've talked about the first um, area, serious in total surrender to the Lord Jesus. We've had several lessons on that, uh, to be totally surrendered to Him. And then the second area was to be serious in a prayer life to the Heavenly Father. Uh, these two areas God has been dealing with me and be serious in these areas. This this is very important. Our days are are short and uh, there's much work to be done. You know the Lord Jesus was a perfect example uh, when he was here of someone that was totally surrendered to his father and he was serious about prayer. He talked to his Heavenly Father. He only he not only um, instructed his followers how to pray but he um, showed them the example. So those are the things I just want us to keep on our mind today, please. That the Lord says it is very vital to be serious in your total commitment to the Lord Jesus, letting Him rule your life, and then to have a prayer life, to really um, spend time with the Lord. Isn't it amazing? The one that loves us most, we speak the less time with him, yes. and the least time with him. Uh, let me just throw this in before we go to serious prayer. Um, I'm a planner. I have a calendar, and I write um, every day what I think needs to be done, or I want to be done. Okay. And God has dealt with me in total surrendering to him. It's all right to be a planner, but don't get upset if God interferes with our plans for the day. He might have something totally different that he wants me to do that day than what I have on the calendar. So we can plan, but just uh, make sure we let the Lord interfere with our plans if they're not his plans. Well, life, so is un life is so uncertain, but um, we can be certain in God. So just let him do his plans. Um, prayer to me, this is what I'm going to say about prayer. Uh, in learning to be a, a prayer, and I, I am still learning, but um, it's just really spending time with the Lord. It's a relationship with the Heavenly Father. And you know, in a relationship, you not only talk, but you listen. So prayer is talking, and it's listening. Uh, usually, we have to have a problem before we'll go to Him in prayer. And um, one of my favorite characters in the Old Testament is Hannah. Now, Hannah really had a problem, uh, and God had allowed Hannah to have that problem. She had no children, and she wanted a male child so badly. She said, I'll even give him back to you, Lord, if, if you will let me have a man child. And uh, it, it's amazing to me what Hannah uh, says in 1 Samuel 15, when she had a problem, it says that Hannah poured out her soul before the Lord. Mm. And I noticed that um, verse, and I started running um, other verses that had the same idea, and in Lamentations 2.19, um, I read, Arise, cry out in the night, beginning of the watches, all four watches. Pour out thy heart like water before the face of the Lord. And then in Psalm 62, 8, Trust in the Lord all times. Pour out your hearts before him. Well, that's interesting. The Lord keeps talking about pour out your heart. What does that mean? It just means tell the Lord how you're feeling. Hannah went to the Lord and she told him how she was feeling. Mm. She just poured out her feelings to the Lord, and she was honest with Him. It's very important to be honest with the Lord. He already knows how we feel, but um, He wants us to tell Him how we're feeling. So, Amen. in prayer, uh, I guess we have to have a problem. Then we pour out our um, 
heart to the Lord. We tell him how we're feeling and what our desire is. I love it in um, 1 Samuel, the second chapter, it says, after God heard Hannah's prayer, he visited her. Or um, another translation says, he paid attention to her need. Isn't that beautiful? Amen. We pour out our heart to the Lord and he pays attention to our need. He not only paid attention to her need, he met the need. He gave her what she asked for. In James 4, 2 and 3, it says you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. That's very important, isn't it? Sometimes we don't get things or get um, what is on our hearts so badly is because we don't go to the Lord and ask. What, what's the use? He's not going to listen. But he says you have not because you ask not or you ask amiss. You don't ask according to my um, will. I was really amazed in 2 Chronicles, the 32nd chapter. Uh, Hezekiah the king was really in trouble. An enemy was coming toward the people. And uh, it, was a, it was a big problem. And so it said that the scripture says that Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah, they poured out their heart to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And they cried unto the Lord. And I love what you read after that. It said, the Lord sent an angel and handled the problem. You know, I got to thinking, Pastor, well, I wonder if God had, would have sent an angel if those two men had not prayed. Mm -hmm. I think the angel was in the answer to the prayer. That, mm -hmm. So God says, I want you to come to me and pour out your heart and tell me what's uh, troubling you. It seems that we have a problem, we have prayer, then we get peace, and then we have praise. That's how it works, isn't it? Amen. And God, um, God tells us to praise Him because He is worthy. Uh, I like uh, to read about Corrie Ten Boone's prayer life. What a prayer warrior that woman was. I mean, she saw God send angels when she was in... Uh, the prison that she stayed in for three years. Uh, one illustration that is given about her prayer life is they were making a movie, The Hiding Place, Yes. that was going to um, be the story of her life. And um, she was called in one day while they were making the film and they said, Miss Corey, we just don't have the funds to finish the film. And uh, the person that was giving the account of what was happening said Miss Corey began to walk around the room just talking out loud and uh, like no one was there with her and she said now Lord you say in your book that you own all the cattle on the hillside yes. so you could sell a few cattle and get the money for this film and it's so amazing the person that was telling this story said that's what happened the cattle men that did have some cattle sold some cattle and sent the money in to mm. uh, to take care of the film Amen. Uh, isn't that a blessing she just yes. talked to the Lord what was on her heart and did you notice that she quoted scripture mm. she told God what he had said in his book so while we're pouring out what's on our heart, it's good to know the book so we can say, God, you said this, mm. and this is what you've promised, and we believe you don't lie, Lord, Amen. and so we can meet this need. And so that was a real blessing to me. Uh, it's not only talking to the Lord and pouring out our heart, but it's also knowing what he says in his book, like Miss uh, Corey Ten Boone, and told the Lord, reminded him what he said, but it's also listening to the Lord. I mean, <laughs> we can't do all the talking in prayer. We have to listen to God. And God says, I have wonderful things to tell you. He said, I have people that I want you praying for. I know God has given me specific prayers to pray for my children and my grandchildren. And some days I just say to the Lord, Lord, um, Thank you for what you've told me to pray, and I, I, I thank you that you're doing that. I might not see evidence right now, but thank you that you're doing that. Mm. I won't shut up, and you said you won't quit as long as I keep coming to you. Uh, so 
listening to the Lord, what he wants to tell us. It's amazing what he will tell us to pray for someone. He will bring them to our mind and he will tell us what we need to pray for them about. He says, listen to me continually. I have much to communicate to you. And in Proverbs 19, 21, listen what the Lord says, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. We can trust what the Lord says. I was amazed as I read the book of Joshua, or I'm reading the book of Joshua. Joshua faced a lot of problems. But um, it's interesting that when he would listen to the Lord and do what the Lord said, there would be great victories. But when they would not wait on the Lord's counsel, they would fall into great destruction. And um, so in one account, when the Lord appeared to him, this is the first thing he said to the Lord. What do you have to say to me, Lord? <laughs> he wanted to make sure that he got the counsel of the Lord. And it's amazing what God did. First, God revealed himself to Joshua. He told him some things about himself. And then he told Joshua the plans he had for him. So in prayer, when we go uh, to the Lord in prayer, God's going to first start revealing himself to us. Who I am and what I've promised and what I want to do and what you need to do. And then he will tell us his plans for us that day. <clears throat> Sometimes we can be the, uh, our answer, the answer to our own prayers. I found this out. Um, and one illustration that God gave to me was we were having, we lived in Hollywood. I don't know if you remember, Pastor, when uh, we had the ladies' Bible luncheon every week and we would have a Bible study and then we would have lunch together. Right. We did that every Tuesday. And so there was one friend that she wanted to come, but she lived, Lourdes, remember Lourdes? I do. She lived about uh, 30 minutes away. And she said, I, I really would like to come and be with you ladies. And so I said, spiritually being, you know, I said, trying to be spiritual, I said, well, we'll pray about it. Mm. Okay, so we started to pray about it. And when I got down to pray about it, this is the thought that came to my mind. You have a car. I said, Lord, that means we would have to go 30 minutes before class and then take her back 30 minutes after class. That's a long way. You're praying that she could come. So your dad and I, mm -hmm. we would go get her. Amen. <laughs> so sometimes when we're praying prayers, the Lord uses, he uses us to answer our own prayers. And I've not forgotten about Lourdes. The Lord said, um, there's a part that you have to do, and I'm not going to do it. There's a part that I have to do, and you can't do it, so we'll work together. Amen. So, <laughs> I like what Dr. Stanley says. He says, fight your battles on your knees in prayer. Pour out your heart to the Lord, and then... Um, let him know how, he knows how we feel, but let him hear from your own lips. And then tell him things that you know that he's told you in his book and that you believe he's true to his book. And then give him the request that you have. I think that the man that teaches me the most about prayer from the Word of God is Elijah. Um, I, I truly think I've learned more about praying through just reading his life. And we read about him and his prayer life in 1 Kings, the 17th and the 18th chapter um, of 1, Samuel, 1 Kings, I'm sorry. And this is basically, I'm just going to sum up what Elijah did. First of all, in the book of James, God says, Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. In other words... He had feelings just like we do. Yes. He had fears. He had depression. Um, he got angry. He got hopeless. God says so. He, he's just like you were. But Elijah prayed and things happened. And this, this is why Elijah could pray and things happened. 
in 1 Kings, the 17th and 18th chapter, we find out that Elijah went and spent time with the Lord. He did. He took time to spend um, special time with the Lord in prayer. And he went to listen to see what God had to say. And that's why he knew that it wasn't going to rain for three and a half years, because God told him that. And then he knew that it was going to rain when there was no evidence of rain. So Elijah, I have learned through Elijah's life that even though he was the man of like passions, we are. God says that the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man or woman availeth much. And I'm just going to quickly break down the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous person. The effectual means we're hitting the mark. We're praying what God tells us to pray. So we've got to spend time with him to see. We just can't throw prayers up, but we spend time. And uh, he tells us what to pray. The effect, we're praying according to the will of God, what the book says and what the Holy Spirit of God is telling us. Fervent means you keep at it. You know, one time the disciples were following the Lord and it, it describes them as the Lord was ahead of them and they were um, so astonished at him. It seemed like he was going on and uh, they were not keeping up with him, but they kept on. The, you, they didn't give up. The fervent, the word means boiling. <laughs> you just keep on whether you see evidence or not. You're trusting what God says in his book and what he is put on your heart through the Holy Spirit. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person. A righteous person is one that's been made right with God through the blood of Jesus. Not only a saved person, but one that is seeking to live according to the word of God. God says that person can do my. Do you want to see a change in your life, in your children, in your friends? Do you have a desire that you want to serve the Lord and it's not come to pass yet. The Lord says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person can do much. God can make great changes in our life. So God has dealt with me to be serious in praying to the Heavenly Father. To take these truths, not forget them. Not just throw up prayers to God but to be in communion with him all day. I, I love a, a verse in the book of Proverbs. God taught me this verse as a young woman, to watch and wait at the door of the Lord. Every day to be watching and waiting at the door of the Lord to hear what he has to say to me that day. I love um, that Jesus prayed for us when he was in the garden. I want to mention the things that he prayed about. First of all, he, he prayed that we would be protected from the devil. Aren't you glad Jesus prayed that for you as a believer? Amen. To be protected from the devil. And to set them apart, Lord, our God, through his word. He said, sanctify them through thy truth. He wants us to know his truth. And he prayed that we would know his truth, his book. He prayed for unity, that we would be one with him, one with one another. He prayed that each one of us would know the ministry that he has for us. And then he prayed that his joy would be fulfilled in us. And he prayed for our destination. He said, Father, I want him to be with me where I am. Amen. What a powerful prayer. I think the Father heard it, don't you? Yes. And those are good things just to go over. They're found in the 17th chapter of John. And uh, I love it in Hebrews. He didn't stop praying for us when he went to heaven. He's still praying for us. Jesus loves us. He wants a relationship with us. He wants to meet with us. I read about um, a man that was very busy. He was a very spiritual man, but he was very busy and... Uh, he didn't have much time for family life and uh, he read his wife's diary after she died she died as a young woman and uh, in one of the days 
writings, she said, I had hoped he would have time to come and be with me today just for a visit, just for fellowship. But I suppose he was too busy. The bro it, that broke the man's heart. That makes me think of our relationship with Jesus. Have we been so busy we haven't even stopped to tell him that we love him or that we thank him for what he is doing and has done for us? We've kept him waiting, haven't we? And he longs for a relationship with us, to talk with us, and to, to for us to talk to him and for him to tell us what's on his heart. God, help us to be serious in our prayer life with the Heavenly Father. Amen. Appreciate that challenge today, Miss Ann. And already looking forward to the next message <laughs> next week, Lord willing. Ladies, we appreciate you viewing. We'd like to encourage you to come and join us at Lulitton Baptist Church. If you do not already have a church home, we meet on Sundays. Miss Ann teaches a women's Bible study at 10 a.m. Miss Linda also has a ladies' Bible study during that hour. Uh, 11 o'clock is our worship service. Then on Wednesdays at 6.30 as well. We're located on Highway 82, just about five miles east of Nehunta. And we certainly encourage you to join us. Miss Ann, if you would, unless you have anything else you want to share, go yes. close us in prayer. Father, we have uh, seen how you want to have a relationship with your people. Forgive us for spending so little time with you, Lord. You have so many blessings and so much uh, miracles that you want to do for us and through us for your glory. Deal with our hearts about this, Lord, that we will be serious in our surrender to the Lord Jesus and serious in a, our relationship and our prayer life with the Heavenly Father. For we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.